Hi, it's Ava Vidal and I'm going to make a quick uh, video response about John Gordillo's podcast which he has brought out and uh, called Podcast for Kel. Kel being my daughter who uh, lost her life to suicide on the 7th of April 2018. Um, and 24th of August 2021 would have been her 27th birthday. Um, I didn't particularly want to make this statement, but members of my family wanted me to make this statement. I don't listen to John Gordillo's podcast. I had someone try and describe it, but I don't listen to it because I don't listen to him. His voice ugh, goes down my spine, sends shivers down my spine. I don't want to hear him. Um, to see a 55 year old man doing, you know, continuing with his constant gaslighting. I've always known John Gordillo to be a gaslighter. He gaslighted me while we were together, um, particularly around my daughter uh, giving her the book Lolita. Uh, he would, you know, do very, very, he was very inappropriate with my daughter. That is why I ended up leaving, with it, leaving him. We lived with him less than 18 months um he'll argue that we were together five years we were not completely together for five years we're not not at all but we did live with him we lived with him for less than 18 months and i maintain what i said then what i said you know at the end of the relationship what i said when you know my daughter started to live with him again and what i said in the court case what i've said my story has never ever changed ever which is John Gordillo was extremely inappropriate with my daughter. Um, after I left him and told him that he would, we would not be coming back to his house, I'd been working away for the weekend. I said, we're not coming back. Me and my daughter had gone. He then pursued my daughter. It was absolutely relentless. It was strange. It was weird. Until such point that I sent my daughter out of the country to live in Barbados with my mother, which proved to be a fatal decision for her that I made. Um, ultimately, it culminated in, in her early death, essentially, when, it, you know, when you look back and you see what happened. Um, I mean, I don't have to just say John Gordillo's a gaslighter. He'll tell you himself. He uh, likes to wrap himself up in this really sexual stuff. I just find it weird. I find it gross. I find it creepy. I didn't hear anything about John Gordillo being a sex addict because I, after I left him, I literally paid no attention. After I got my daughter to Barbados, I literally thought this guy was gone. I had a lucky escape. My daughter had the lucky escape. He was out of our lives. We would never really see or hear from him again. What a lot of people don't realise is when I left him in May 2009, I saw him once at the Edinburgh Festival across a room in a bar. And after that, I hadn't seen I hadn't seen John Gordillo till 2018 in the courtroom. Um, so you don't have to take my word for him being a gaslighter. You can read this little screenshot we're going to put up here, um, and you can make your mind up for yourself. Who talks like that? Who speaks like that? Um, just disgusting, Ugh. disgusting. Um, so he has released this podcast recently. And on this podcast, he has somebody who he claims is my daughter. <sighs> it is not my daughter on his podcast, okay? Um, it's not. We went through a court case. We went for, for years. He, you know, since my, well, since my daughter's death, actually, because what a lot of people don't realise is prior to my daughter's death, John Gordillo never once accused me of physical abuse of my daughter. Never. Um, when I left him, his accusations against me were about things that weren't very tangible, that weren't tangible. So it would be, you're very cold with her. You're very off. Sometimes you don't want to mother her. Bearing in mind that this time, 2009, he's just been told he can't see his only biological child anymore because of the psychological damage he's causing that child. And he was like, okay. And he just decided my beautiful teenage girl was who he was going to pursue. And it was relentless. It was very, very strange. Um, I ended up having to pull her out of school because he was hanging around the school gates and they were complaining about inappropriate contact. Um, 
and like I said, I, I gave her to my mother, which was a very, very big mistake. Um, I don't listen to John Gordis Gillow's podcast because I don't listen to any of his nonsense, but family members have listened to parts of it, and I think quite a lot of them are annoyed and want it clarified. My family do not support John Gordillo. He says he's got the um, support of my daughter, like my family, my daughter, no. Um, I don't even think at this point he's got the support of uh, my daughter's biological father's family, and that's not because they've got any morals or decency or anything like that. They just don't care. They didn't know my daughter. They turned up to court. They made up a very... Um, you know, I can't bother bothered. I've spoken about them before. However, after they'd done what they'd done in court, they done what they, you know, did in court, done what they'd done. I don't care. After that, we never saw them again. We didn't really know them as, as she was growing up. Um, none of them who were swearing blind how much my daughter meant to them, how much they loved her, how much they cared about her, how awful all of this was. Never saw them again. Not one, not one member of that family. They couldn't even fucking pretend till the end of the inquest. They couldn't even be bothered. Never saw them again. So, um, so there's that. Um, then the people that he's got in my family that still support him, I'm not going to say there weren't people that supported him at first, but these were cousins in the States and stuff, who'd been lied to by my mother about this man. Oh, he's really lovely. He's so nice to Shaquille. He's just the greatest person. But they were being fed lies. You know, these things were not true. So as soon as a lot of them realized what had been going on, because I was estranged from my family at that point, I've got a very toxic relationship with my mother, had, because I have no relationship with her and never will again. But I'd had a very toxic relationship with her and there were times when I had to remove this woman from my life. The many times I removed her from my life, it wasn't working. So eventually what I did was I had to remove her and remove everybody that knew her and that meant my own blood family members. Um, so that goes to show how desperate I was to get John Gordilla away from my daughter, that that's the person I had to call. And... Edgar Harrison, her biological father's family, I did go to them. I've got, I can doc, you know, I've got evidence for everything I'm saying right here, screenshots, emails, whatever. But I just don't want to spend too much time on this. I don't like giving too much energy to John Gordillo. I don't like acknowledging his pathetic, disgusting existence too much. Um, I don't just stay away. He, he's poison. He's a, this, he's a very troubled person, put it this way. Um, so my mother, who might well be on his side, um, did, she didn't only just take his side, she lied. She actively lied on behalf of John Gordillo. She lied on behalf of Edgar Harrison. She made up a whole story, a whole relationship that Shaquille had with her biological father when she was young, but mm -mm, didn't realize that he'd been in prison. So just seeing her scramble around to try and, you know, they didn't realise I knew that he'd been in and out of prison, but the streets talk. So I would know, I would see, bump into friends of his and they would say to me, oh, do you visit him? Do you go and see him inside? I'm like, I don't know that bitch. I'm not going inside prison to visit him. If I'm going inside prison to visit someone, it's going to be somebody that I give a shit about. He was in my daughter's life for the first year on and off. And then again, when she was seven for a couple of months, that is it. But during that, those two short periods of time, because of the constant uh, reports, anonymous reports, which we now know were my mother, um, because of those, while he was present, he is actually on record saying that I never abused my daughter. There was no reason for my social services to be involved in my daughter's life. You know, so I don't care what he, what, you know, was said in the court. These these things were just not true. Um, so, you know, not only did my mother lie on behalf of John Gordillo, my mother also viciously attacked people, viciously attacked members of this family. So while she's pretending to be the doting grandmother, oh, my, gran, my granddaughter's died. I can show you some screenshots here 
of how she was speaking to my own brother, who is her son, about when he was warning her, hey, this John Gordillo story doesn't make a lot of sense. So he was asking certain things. He was asking to go and see my daughter's flat. She lied and pretended that the flat, you know, trying to shame him. Oh, are you some kind of peeping Tom? The flat's gone now. It's been rented out to somebody else. Um, you know, trying to make out he was weird. Lots of people, when they lose somebody, will go to, you know, they'll go to maybe, people go to places that hold sentimental value for them. Look how my mother was speaking to my brother at this time. Look at how the Caribbean church lady was going, yeah, piss off. Yeah, and she was so callous about my daughter's death. Oh, you're going on about your dead niece. You're going on about your dead niece. You've got a living one. Why don't you go and spend time with a living one rather than a dead one? You know what I mean? And it, it's that literally. So you can see what kind of person my mother is. So if John Gordillo has my mother on side, keep her. None of us want her. We don't want anything to do with her. Me and my siblings want nothing to do with her. My mother has a younger child. Uh, she's not a young, she's like nearly 40. Or 40, I don't know, I don't care. Uh, called Rachel Vidal. Now, what's very interesting about Rachel Vidal is, yes, she sided with John Gordillo as well. Now, if you want to give my mother the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, she didn't even live in the country. How was she supposed to know what John was getting up to? How she, how was she supposed to figure out that, you're, you know, that Shaquille had, uh, you know, within a year of living with John Gordillo, was on one of his favourite websites? How would she know all the way in Barbados? Fine. Rachel Vidal lived around the corner from John Gordillo. Rachel Vidal can and often did walk to John Gordillo's house. She was another person who, when my daughter died, I don't, I don't know Rachel Vidal. Can we make this very, very clear? I do not know her, okay? This girl, there's an age gap between us, okay? So I was at boarding school till 16 years old. She was not in my school. I was at boarding school till 16 years old. At 16, I think it's, you know, with the age gap, whatever. Anyway, I don't know the girl, okay? I know the woman, I should say, because though she acts like she's 15 years old, she's actually a grown woman. So all of her rantings and defending John Gordillo and cussing out any member of our family that was, try, was trying to say to her, what are you doing? Why are you defending this man? She was lying. I mean, both her and my mother lied. to the, they, they lied up to this day. To up to this day, I don't think they've ever admitted it. Because even if they want to say, back then, well, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know that uh, Shaquille was involved with sex work. We didn't know that John Gordillo was a sex addict. We didn't know he was doing uh, comedy shows about his sex addiction and his use of sex workers. But you know now. You know now. He's admitted to these things himself. How can you still sit there... Have either of them made any attempt to say to family members, you know what, we got it wrong? You know, even if you say we still want to side with John Gordillo, you got it wrong. Why don't you say, you know, all the aggression that we gave was not warranted? Because actually, John Gordillo himself has admitted that Shaquille was involved in sex work. John Gordillo is speaking about it quite freely on her on his podcast. Um it was, it was said, I mean, they've both admitted it as well, that over the years they had been asking John Gordillo for money and had been receiving it. So whether this affected, I'm not, you know, I'll put it this way, did this affect how they saw him or did this make it him, make them turn a blind eye? Do you know what I mean? One or the other is true. I know which one I believe. I'm not going to speculate. People can make up their own minds. Um, they both financially benefited from my daughter while my daughter was alive. They both financially benefited when my daughter died. So when uh, the person who paid for this whole entire court case came on the scene, what's very interesting, and th this is proof, Rachel Vidal, on the 6th of April, 2018, had... Um, she had no money, okay? She's got a young child, 12 years, 12 days, younger than my youngest child. She was in, she, she doesn't work. 
she, had, she was certainly not working at the time. She struggled financially, okay? So she would get money from John Gordillo when she could. Um, and she would ask my nephew for money or she'd ask my brother for money. On the 6th of April, 2018, she requested um, money from my brother, right? So she was like, um, you know, you can see the screenshot of what she said, you know? She said, oh, you know, she, she asked my brother, can you put money in my cat doll? I, have, I need uh, 30 pounds of food and, that, and I need money for nappies. I need to pay my phone bill, right? So this is what she said to my brother. You've got to note the date on the 6th of April, the day before my daughter died, she had asked my brother to come around and give her money. She couldn't feed her own child and she couldn't put nappies on her own child. She was that broke. Then, I have to ask you what you think. I, uh, you know, what people, what I'm asking, I'm not speaking really, I'm speaking to a camera, but what, if this girl is innocent, and she wasn't involved in what John Gordillo was doing, how come on the 20th of April, after declaring herself so heartbroken about my daughter's death and it's all Ava's fault and Ava's the devil incarnate and I'll never forgive Ava for her shenanigans. Bitch, I don't know you. You don't need to forgive me. I don't know you. What are you talking about? You are just weird, right? So after all her great declarations, all of a sudden, you can go on company's house. I'll put the screenshot right here. You can go and look it up for yourself. She hires a company that start businesses for people, okay? They start businesses for you. You go there, you show your ID, and they will set up a business for you. They will get a, a business address for you, and they will, most importantly, set up a bank account for you. And I already know, it's already been admitted, uh, that these people were paid money um, for that court case because the person who wanted, who really wanted a computer and phone, um, who was somebody who was very rich, that was involved with my daughter, he paid out the money, basically. So, clearly, somebody had, had said to me, look, you know, a lot of times people write to me and say, hey, hold on a second, I saw this on Twitter. Hey, John Gordillo is saying this. Hey, I've seen this and this is not true because I knew those people at that time. Um, so somebody wrote to me and said, hey, you do understand that uh, where, you know, ha who was distributing money and all that after your daughter's death. Despite pretending to be so heartbroken, she couldn't buy nappies or food for herself. But yet a few days later, she could pay a company to set up a business in her name. That is all I have to say, really, it, it, you know, in, in respect of her. So, yes, John Gordillo saying he's got family support. That's the family support that he's he's talking about. Um, like I said, we went through a court case. These audio clips that he said, he never mentioned having any audio recordings of my daughter saying that I abused her during the court case. Not once. He claimed he had writing belonging to my daughter that he was going to release after the court case. Um, he never said. The first week that I saw about audio recordings of my daughter, and I was like, bullshit. Bullshit. Why would you go through a whole court case? Basically, the court case is, don't let her bury her daughter. She's an abusive mother. Wouldn't the time to go, to, to be to present that to go, da-da, and here's a recording of her daughter saying she's an abusive mother. Wouldn't that have been the time to bring it out? But no. So, um, 2018, he makes uh, a stupid statement on, on, on his Facebook, you know, lying about what happened in the court case. I let him go. I let him off. And that's when he first brought up the audio recordings. And in April, on the anniversary of her death, I'm going to release these recordings and I'm going to release a podcast for Kel. Didn't come. Her next birthday, every birthday, every anniversary, every time there's a significant date, John Gordillo will 
stir up to try it. You know what I mean? Like I said, he's a gaslighter. He likes to provoke. I think he's a sadist. I think he's an idiot. Whatever. So this is what he will do. But birthdays and anniversaries came and there was nothing from John Gordillo. Okay. There was none of these recordings. It was like podcast for Kel coming soon. Podcast for Kel coming soon. And like, where's it at? Where's this podcast for Kel that you claim that you've got? Um, eventually in 2020, I took John Gordillo back to court because John Gordillo had put a statement up on his Twitter inviting people to email him and he would tell them the real truth. Um, because John Gordillo surrounds himself with idiots and he likes gaslighting people and he likes fooling people, he, you know, he sometimes forgets, you know? So sometimes when he goes out into the real world where there's parents and there's decent people and there's people with life experience and he comes with his bullshit stories, people get very alarmed, okay? So one of the things that he had had written, right, which, which I saw, which I thought that is enough, he'd written this vicious email about me. Um, and bear in mind, we're in, we're in June 2020 by now, okay? We're, people are worried about lockdown, they're worried about jobs, they're worried about this. Is John, no, he's not. He's sitting writing little poison pen letters ab about me to people. Oh, you don't know, Ava Vidal didn't even love her daughter. Ava Vidal's an abuser. And every time we hear about this abuse, it gets worse. By this point, he's now telling, he's now writing in emails that I beat my daughter with a piece of wood with an open nail on it and she had scarred up legs. Of course you're free to say that now. Now, I said this to a comedian. I said, God, this guy, he doesn't fucking stop. He keeps carrying on with his shit and it keeps getting worse. I said, I've never heard this accusation before. And she said to me, to be honest, I have, and maybe I should have told you before, but you were going through a lot. In 2018, I got she showed me a message exchange between her and a comedian I'd never met in my life. And that comedian was like, yeah, I know, I've been to John's house. Ava Vidal's abusive. Um, I spoke to people that knew her daughter. And also, I know that she had scars on her legs because she beat her with a piece of stick, a, you know, piece of wood with a nail in it, right? Um, so I thought, okay, this is enough. This is enough. John Gordillo had already said in 2019, he'd said to somebody, oh, when I do to Ava Vidal, what I'm going to do to her next, uh, she'll never work again. I addressed that on social media. Oh, oh. I addressed that no, she's unfathomable. She's unfathomable. And it's not my intention. I don't care about her in one sense. But she's not going to work again after what, after what oh, really? I'm going to do to her. She's not going to work again. Is she a comedian? Inevitably. Medium, she's a comedian. And she's, well, she's not really on the circuit anymore as such, which sort of works as a commentator. But now we've got to the point of ridiculous. As I said, none of these accusations of physical abuse during the time when I left him, when he was going to social services about me, when we were arguing back and forth, when he was asking for my daughter to be, to come and live with him, when it was just me and him emailing, why didn't you say, but he'd go, you're often cold, you're this, but why didn't you say, you beat the shit out of that girl and you know you do. He never said it because it never happened. And I just thought at this point, this guy is really relentlessly trying to ruin my life because if you're, as you say, your whole involvement in this is your father, you saw her as a daughter and you loved and cared about her, she's not here anymore. Fine, you want to argue about, the, about uh, what happens to her body and her items, that's done. That's over in 2018. Why in 2020 are you still keeping this fucking shit going? Why? Because it was never about my daughter. It was about ruining my life, getting revenge on me, for me for having the temerity to walk out of a relationship with him, for me to spot his bullshit and call him out on his bullshit and say, your interest in that girl is not father daughter. There's, there's, it's ridiculous. So I took him back to court, and my God, took him back kicking and screaming. For somebody who's so, because you see, people don't understand the court case that we had before. 
This wasn't about that. I've explained that before. If you want to hear more about what happened, go to my Twitter page. I have written, um, and not behind the paywall, go to my Patreon. You can find it on there. I've written extensively about that, and I don't want to spend too much time on here today. So basically, um, I when I did go to court and say, right, come on, Your Honor, he's hiding behind a gagging order. This gagging order is pretty much useless by now. Did John Gordilla just say, hey, he could have just said, hey, I agree, let's lift the order. No, he came, we got into court kicking and screaming. He was lying. First of all, he wrote a letter to a judge, okay, which, oh my God, it was embarrassing. He wrote this long letter. To, imagine writing a letter to a judge that's so vicious and nasty. Ava Vidal's disordered. She's an abuser. I won't. She deserves no seat at the table. She doesn't deserve to speak about my daughter. I don't have to come to court because she says so. I want nothing to do with this. I don't want any part of it. That's all I knew. It was this vicious piece of shit. Judge looked at that, right, and handed it to my barrister, um, and we were like, what? Who writes that? How manipulative do you have to be? How much fucking white man mediocre confidence do you have to think that that was a clever idea that you could send it to the judge? And he even had the audacity to write afterwards, oh, I sent that to the judge. I didn't expect it to be shown to Miss Vidal. Mate, it's called disclosure. You don't have a, 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 a through line to a judge a private line to a judge where you can chat shit and spread more lies about me. I'm allowed to defend myself from those kind of bullshit accusations and that is exactly what happened. It took, so I applied for the court case, I think July, July uh, 2020. Well, I finally got him into court in December 2020 and he tried every trick in the book he didn't even serve me with his paperwork. Basically, he was pretending, the last thing I heard was he wanted nothing to do with the case. So he pretended he was having nothing to do with it, but he was secretly depositing paperwork at the court without serving it to me. Anyway, all his bullshit, all his crap, all his, his sly games gained nothing, okay? He even knew he was losing, he, he just lost that court case. It was embarrassing for him. It was truly embarrassing. And he actually said to the judge, okay, I don't want it lifted because when she says it's going to be lifted, because he lied, he likes to pretend he's won. John Gordon has never won a court case against me, never. Despite all the lies he's told, he's never done that. So he then turns to the judge and says, okay, uh, I don't mind it being lifted, but if you, you, know, if you are going to lift it, your honour, can I have um, a few months to get my story straight? Bitch, what? What? We are now in 2020, right? The last month of 2020. You've been carrying on this shit, right? I have told one consistent story since 2009. You have told so many different stories. You're, you know, it's changed. This has happened. That's happened. Every time you get caught out in a lie, then that changes and it's this and it's that. You know, it's just bullshit. But you want a few months? You want a few fucking months? to get your story straight, out of here. Didn't win, order was lifted immediately. Um, the next thing that I know is, I thought, right, you now know, I will take your ass back to court. So just leave it, thinking, okay, he's, he's been humiliated in court. He made an absolute fool of himself. Maybe he'll stop now. Let's just get on with our lives. Mm -mm. He still can't keep going. Coming soon, podcast for Kel. Coming soon on the next anniversary of her death. <sighs> Still saying, like he's been saying since 2018, I've got these audio recordings of her talking about her abusive mother. So, get lawyers again. We send him a letter, say before we take any action, we would like to see these recordings, we'd like to see if they're authentic. He doesn't answer the lawyer's letter. No, not John Gordillo, because he thinks he's just so important that he doesn't have to, you know, he can employ the law to harass me, but I cannot use the law, in, you know, to, to respond, okay? So he, we send this to him, and I think, right, maybe he'll send these recordings, or maybe because he knows he hasn't got them, he'll shut the fuck 
up and get on with his sad, pathetic life. Mr. Gillard. Yeah, Mr. Gillard, I'm a processor. I've been asked to give you some some legal documents. I'm gonna put them through the letterbox. Dillow all of a sudden in 2021 releases podcast for Kel. So I hear my mother's voice on it and I'm like, excellent, bingo. I take him back to court again and I ask to have the order lifted. Jungle Dillow was like, oh, your honour, you've got to stop her bringing these court cases. You know, this has got to stop. She's bringing all these pathetic, these court cases and they shouldn't be allowed. And do the bitch, whatever I want. End of story. I managed to get my daughter, my, my mother's, uh, you know, by this time she's not even in this country, this is costing me a small fortune, okay? This has cost me a small fortune. I've had to make court applications. I've had to get a uh, process service. I had to pay a process server in Barbados. And because I know what a liar my mother is, I got the best law firm in Barbados, which is called Motley's, which um, is the law firm of the Prime Minister, her family's law firm. So I wanted, so I didn't want a friend to go and drop a paperwork for her to tell any lies. I wanted her served properly by a proper lawyer, and that's what I did. She still lied and pretended that he was put in the wrong hat. It doesn't matter. That's what she, she can't help herself. Um, you know, so. I got that lifted as well. John Godillo was online going, I what we won this morning. Podcast for Kel stays on air. Delusional. I don't know what I, I was on air. On air. It's on fucking YouTube, you fucking tit. Not only is it on you and by the way, he made it for YouTube. I don't know to this well, I do know actually. He's made a podcast for YouTube, but it's all audio. You can't see people. Why? Is John Gordillo not a filmmaker? Why is this podcast audio? Why has he not, why is he not showing anyone? Because everybody who's listened to it said, fucking hell, those people that he's got there are pissed out of their mind or they're high on something. They're slurring words. They sound inebriated. They're all effing and blinding and shouting over each other. So he's got people who he claims are my daughter's friends. Um, he has long been around my daughter's friends. So when I removed my daughter from school, um, I'll put some screenshots up now. John Gordillo was going down to the school. Like I said, he got reported by social to social services for doing this. He was hanging around my daughter's friends. So when you hear him talk about, oh yeah, we sat together and we tried to work out how to stop Ava sending Shaquille to Barbados. Bear in mind, these were 14-year-old girls at the time. He's talking about sitting down with my daughter's friends as though you were all adults and you were all on one level playing field. No, he was sitting down with teenage girls. He opened his house up, you know, like to my daughter's friends. By his own admission, he would allow them to drink. He would allow them to do class A drugs in his house. Now, you can call that whatever you want to call that. I call that grooming. Okay, that is grooming. It's textbook grooming. So, there are some people on his podcast who are now... Um, a few of these people seem to have faded away. Um, but there are people on his podcast... I, I Also, bearing in mind, I've never met these people. I've never met these people. There's a main person that he's got on his podcast who I'd heard of before, who all of a sudden is my daughter's best friend, not from what I heard. This is a very troubled person. This is a person who, quite frankly, I could say a lot of things about this person. I'm not going to say lots of things about this person because as far as I'm concerned, 
John Cordillo has been hanging around this person, having this person to his house, uh, letting this person use drugs in his house, letting this person behave just uh, absolutely appallingly. Uh, the way this person carries himself, the way this person speaks, I'm not going to blame that person. I blame John Gordillo because you should never have been around that person when they were 14 years old. And for whatever reason, he can, you know, whatever. I don't know. Maybe one day, as you know, when you're, you are younger and you think, oh, this grown up's around me and this grown up's really cool. Or you've got sense and you go, oh, okay, okay, this grown-up's a little bit weird. You shouldn't be hanging around with kids like that. Whatever. That's their problem. That's their issue. But don't present this person as this is Shaquille's best friend. And this person really cared about Shaquille. And John has called it a podcast for Kel. I think he should rename it a podcast for John. Because if that is how he honours my daughter's memory, I don't know why he thinks... He should be the guardian of my daughter's memory anyway. You don't, she's not your child, whatever you say. I don't mind him calling her his daughter. People are like, oh, you've got to stop him doing that. Does that. No, it doesn't bother me. And the reason it doesn't bother me is because look at what he was doing to her. So you're doing all these things to your daughter. You're having these inappropriate conversations with your daughter. You know what I mean? Call her your daughter if you want to. It just makes you look sicker than, it just shows, it exposes the sickness. So I wasn't allowed to have a computer and phone because I was going to tell her secrets to people. But these people, this podcast, why I say it's a podcast for John, is because people are saying, hold on a second, you're a sex addict, this girl's in your house, all of a sudden she starts wanting to do sex work within a year of living with you, your attitude towards it's weird. You're not reacting like a parent. A lot of people have called him on his bullshit. So all of a sudden, this character that he painted of her when she first died, this broken bird that was broken by her evil mother, is this confident, go-getting sex worker. They're all talking about, oh, yeah, she was promiscuous. I'm the one who's not allowed the computer and phone because I'm going to spill her secrets, yet... He is now releasing a podcast where he's got these people saying the most filthy, disgusting things. Oh, you know, we don't know what, what she did. We don't know. And why would you, if you're a father, want to have people talking about sex life and you're in the background like, mm, mm, and getting really excited about it. And the person's going, oh yeah, she was a scat girl. What does that mean, Mr. John Godilla? What does that mean? Tell everybody who's listening, what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, she shit on them for money. Oh, did she? Did she? This, this was no podcast for Kel. This was a podcast and is a podcast for John to lie, to try and clear up uh, at what he did, like he's dealing with idiots, to provoke and to annoy. He's, he, you know, and what is so funny about it is Jesus Christ. You announced that in 2018, you released that in 2021, and that's it. That's it. That is the most, the podcast, go to my Twitter feed, uh, you can look under my pin tweet, where you can see a statement that somebody made at the time about John Gordillo and his relationship to my daughter, someone who was very close at the time, actually his ex-wife now. Um, that's on, on my Twitter feed. Go and have a look at it. Um, and also, I mean, he has, they have been trying to harass me, by the way, to get it off. And I'm not going to get too much into that and what was done because that's a situation I'm now dealing with. It's non-stop harassment. It's non-stop harassment. It's anything you can do to stop me talking and to stop me telling the truth. That's never going to happen. So you can also see, so what I did simply was I got a, a friend, forensic audio analyst, which cost me a thousand pounds. This is what I'm telling you about money wasted, time wasted, energy wasted. Instead of even addressing it at that point, I merely got it. I got um, a clip of her voice from a video that you had of her in there. I got them to do a voice comparison and I also got them to pull apart. As you know, forensic audio analysts can tell 
when something was recorded, they can tell was it recorded in an empty room. They could see, I don't want to go into it too much because I do intend to report John Gordillo, not report him, but I do intend to take him to court for defamation as he's been warned. Um, so I'm not going to get into it, but there are bits on my Twitter feed where you can see it's a very, very reputable company. They work for a lot of big names. Um, they are people that if they put a court statement in and say, this is what we analysed, this restaurant scene is absolute bullshit. This was not recorded in the way this person says the levels are wrong. Um, whatever they said about it, that stands. I don't, you know... That's the, the, the annoying bit for me. It's the having to constantly pick apart this shit. You know, because at this point, I don't know what John Gordillo wants. I've got no idea what he wants. As I said, it's very clear this is not about my daughter. Um, so, I don't know. I made the statement. I said what I've got to say. Um, I will take him to court. Obviously, these things cost money. It's cost me a small fortune so far. Um, but I will persevere and I will, I will get him into the courtroom. Um, I, no doubt we're going to have to put up with a lot of nonsense again of him trying to avoid it. He hasn't answered, uh, he's ignored letters so far. That's fine. Um, you know, for somebody who's this truth teller, I will speak my daughter's truth. You're not very keen when it comes to going to courtroom and speaking your daughter, your daughter's truth in front of a judge. So, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has sent me information. Some of the people who sent me information was, they did so at great risk to themselves. Um, sex workers, people like that, who help, are helping me and continue because we keep continuing to find out new things. There's something very serious that we found out about what was going on in Barbados. There's other things, there's people who went to sixth form with her who've told me things. There's lots and lots and lots of things that I'm finding out about my daughter. Like I said, I was told about Rachel Vidal, uh, who started that business to funnel money through. We, we know all about all of it, you know, and there's bound to be more to come. So thank you to everybody who has supported me. Thank you to everybody who continues to support me. Um, the truth will come out. The truth will come out and Gordillo can kick and scream and object and release bullshit and lie and, you know, paint himself to be some kind of normal person who had a normal interest in my child. Because whatever you want to say, whatever you want to say, I said from day one, his interest in that child is not a fatherly interest. What happens? He then is given clear run by my mother. So he had two and a half years access to her that I didn't even know about, okay? So he had time to work on her. He, she wasn't, she didn't go anywhere. Like she, he was in Barbados. She went for a short holiday to New York, he was there. My mother let her have him, you know, go back to his house in 2012 for, for a holiday without my knowledge, without my permission. So all of these things are going on and I don't know about it. But look at the end result. Was I lying? Was I wrong? She lives with a man who, after I left him, starts speaking freely about his sexual addiction, which he'd never spoken to me about. Within a year of living with this man, she's involved in sex work on a website that he admits that he uses, okay? He has, even in his podcast, apparently, when he's speaking about my daughter and her life with him, it sounds chaotic. He was not, you know, giving a stable home for my child at all. He was not doing that. By his own admission, that was not what was going on. There was a lot of stuff that was very, very unhealthy environment he had my daughter in. He admits himself that she went to live with him in 2013, okay? Towards the end of 2013, by early 2014, she had her first suicide attempt. And she continued to make these suicide attempts. And within five years of being with John Gordillo, she was dead. Was I wrong? No, I was not. 